What's going on, geese and gamers? It's Odin coming back with another video, and today we got the box office breakdown for this past weekend, which saw no new major releases, and so therefore the only film really doing much of anything at the box office is Spider-Man No Way Home, which continues to uh, break narratives and do incredibly well. Now, crossing a billion dollars overseas in the international market, bringing its global to $1.74 billion, which is insane. And that's about the minimum of what they projected it to make, which means that it'll probably end its run somewhere closer to $1.8 or more billion dollars by the end of its run, which when you just take things into account, oh, it's just, again, it's, it's a truly phenomenal thing for this to be happening after especially everything that's been going on with the fear-mongering, etc., that is still even being perpetuated as films are not doing as well or not being able to capture similar magic. Obviously, nowhere close to this, but even within their own fan spheres, etc. But before going any further into that bit of news, please make sure you smash that like button, lab that fire button if you're watching us over on Odyssey, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on. That way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So from Deadline, we have Spider-Man No Way Home swings past $1 billion overseas with $1.74 billion in total. Says it scaled fresh heights this session as it reached an amazing new milestone crossing billion dollars internationally. The offshore cum through Sunday is estimated to be a little over a billion for the global being $1.74. New milestone No Way Home becomes only the 10th movie ever to hit a billion dollars internationally. And most impressively, the film got there without any input from China where a release date has not been given. And as I've been saying for a very long time, I really hope Sony does not get one. Apparently, the film has already gone through the censorship or the censors process, the censorship, really, censorship process, and gotten approved, or at least a version of the film's gotten approved. They have just not come out to actually put a release date on the calendar. Again, Sony is the sole distributor as far as the film is concerned, and I would say to them, don't. Don't put it out there. All you're going to be doing by doing that is by, yes, making your film a little bit bigger. Yes, potentially pushing your film to the $2 billion mark. But at what cost? You know, I'll tell you what the cost would be. It would be spending and giving millions upon millions of dollars to the CCP. And Lord knows what they do with that money, especially when it comes to their human rights violations. So if Sony wants to actually take a stand, not that they've ever taken a stand before... But if they want to actually have an opportunity to take a stand, have a backbone, and actually do something for a positive change, not giving millions upon millions of dollars to China could be at least a good way to start. Definitely not the most that they could do, but at the very least, the bare minimum of what they can do. The current weekend added another $21.1 million from 14,000 plus screens in 63 markets. The holdover drop was 26%, while individual markets did better than the average, including Saudi Arabia which saw an increase in 16%. Germany and Spain saw drops around 16 and 19%. Italy, 20%. Belgium, 22 And Australia, 23%. And keep in mind, this is in a lot of countries where there are, again, severe lockdown measures and severe uh, passport nonsensical stuff. And so the fact that these film, this film specifically is even doing as well as it is, is even that much more impressive with all of the stuff going on. And it's not about fear, right? It's not about people actually being afraid to go to see an actual film it's the fear-mongering of the media that's been attempted to be done, and that's the excuse that they've been using is saying, oh, well, clearly these films aren't doing well because of this, and so we're going to go ahead and try and dredge it up, when in reality, it's no, it's because there haven't really been a lot of films that have been put out that people actually want to go see, and this is, case in point, a great example. If you look to all the other MCU, the Disney's run MCU films this year, people argue saying, well, look, those are the highest grossing films of the year. Okay, they still lost money. They still were financial failures, but because of the fact they didn't make their money back, and they also still, in comparison to this one singular film, can't even add up, which I think spells an entirely other problem for the Disney-specific MCU films. Looking at the weekend domestic chart for this weekend, we love charts here. Yeah? Spider-Man No Way Home, another $11 million. Again, only a 21% drop. This is incredibly uh, strong. Still, after seven weekends of release, the film is, again, on top. It only fell off once for Scream 5's opening weekend. It has since dropped off. Scream 5, though, is indeed making profit as it had a very small budget of around $24 million, and it does have a small but passionate fan base that has shown up for it and continues to show up for it. It is likely not to make that much more money as it is already starting to lose out on some screens, though it is still out at 3,500 screens. The film, again, doesn't have a chance to get to the $100 million mark domestically. Uh, it doesn't seem very strong at this point, but hey, you never know. 
willpower of a strong small fan base can easily uh, you know change change the world right move mountains as they say sing too this animated film that just doesn't seem to die, uh, still making money as well, 4.8 million, another 17% drop, actually adding on theaters. So this film seems to be doing pretty well as far as the younger audiences and the families are concerned. This is its sixth weekend in release. So again, Sing 2 and Spider-Man No Way Home have really been kind of the strongest so far. Scream has, of course, added itself to the to the equation with the uh, more adult audience, the more rated R type audience there. While newer films like Redeeming Love, which is in its second week of release, has dropped 48% was not really in a lot of theaters to begin with and is again there's no budget for the film that we have seen yet so it's impossible to say whether the film is going to be financially successful or not looking at the entirety of the chart we also have the king's man in the top five still with only a two percent drop one of the smallest drops I've ever seen uh, without it being an actual addition like you see in the case of American Underdog, but $1.7 million for the 20th Century uh, Fox flop because, as I said in previous videos, it costs so much money and it is just not made that money back. Now, again, does that mean Disney lost money? It's really impossible to say that specifically. In fact, it's probably a stronger argument to say that Disney has made money from it because when they paid for the 20th Century Studios deal, Right, the billions upon billions of dollars for that, uh, for the studio and for their uh, for their products, etc. Uh, they obviously didn't spend the money that was already spent on this. However, counter argument can be, yeah, but have they made up the billions upon billions that they spent? to acquire the rights to 20th Century Studios. And I think, again, in the end of the day, it ends up being a wash. And this film is only adding on uh, a very small amount of money to the amount of money that Disney needs to actually make to make up for that deal. The 355 can need to drop off so bad, in fact, it's already available on streaming. It's already available uh, to get on the VOD, on the video on demand service, because no one is going to see it. No one wants to go see it. And uh, man, oh man, again, it, it really is just a great thing to see identity politics to a T as far as the actual writing process and the conceptual design of the film being literally starting ground of Jessica Chastain saying, hey, I have an idea for a film. Let's make a female-led spy film instead of a, hey, let's make a great spy film regardless of the gender or the race of the person. And of course, this film is all about gender and race, and one just needs to look at the poster to know that as a fact. And hey, people don't want that kind of pandering nonsense being shoved down their throats. American Underdog is again a film I wish I could say is successful, but I can't because they still have not put any budgets out there. Ghostbusters Afterlife continues to make a little bit of money as well. Again, still out, still holding strong as the physical media release for that film is imminent. And, of course, this film is doing well enough to where, especially after physical media is concerned, it's going to be very hard for anyone to argue or to still try to bring up the argument that 2016's Ghostbusters somehow made more money at the box office. Yeah, you could definitely have that argument to be made, but it's not that far apart. Not to mention, Ghostbusters had a much smaller production budget, meaning a much smaller marketing budget by proxy. And also, in the midst of plenty of places being shut down, etc. People still went out in droves to go see the film. It is, again, highly rated amongst critics and audiences. And also, the biggest thing of all, physical media sales are very, very high for it. And I cannot wait to start covering those physical media sales to kind of help showcase that. Spider-Man No Way Home, again, $1.7 billion. So this is not fully updated yet, as it is up to $1.7, uh, a little, a little uh, around, you know, closer to $7.5 billion. Scream 5, up to $83 million worldwide. Sing 2 at 267. As I said, Sing 2 definitely doing a lot better than expected. The King's Daughter, also in its second week of release, uh, the film that was technically made back in, what, 2014 to 2016, and then went through hell trying to get distributed, finally did did cost 40 plus million dollars and that is back then which means that the actual budget for the film is closer to 50 million dollars this film massive flop second weekend now we can now confirm that this film will be a flop not that many people care about that movie redeeming love again really hard to say king's man still a flop 100 million dollars or so flop there because of how much money they spent and how little money they actually made in return 355 massive flop hilarious again 15 million dollars you talk about diane kruger Penelope Cruz, Jessica Chastain, Lupita Nyong'o. I mean, those are names that most people know. Th those are people, again, it goes into the, the studio that brought you Jason Bourne, right? And this had a marketing campaign and it had a very, uh, you know, a very aggressive marketing campaign at that with trailers all over the place, etc. Not to say the trailers were any good, but hey, they were all over the place. And yet this film couldn't even get 15 million or barely is at 15 million, almost 16 million dollars. I mean, this this is just an atrocity of a film. It's not even that this is a financial flop. This is one of the worst performances of a film with this caliber of people. 
that I've seen in a very long time, if if not possibly even ever. Kurt Warner, again, still doing relatively well. Ghostbusters Afterlife now up to $196 million. Will it break $200 million? We'll have to, of course, wait and see on that. If you go to my actual box office chart over at OMBReviews.com, you can see King's Daughter right now is at a $70 million loss, and my projections are it'll be somewhere between $70 and $69 million in losses because... It's, again, making nothing. Speaking of films, not making anything at all. It's made $1.4 million after the first two weeks, meaning the max it'll make, based on these numbers, is it likely going to be closer to $2.9 million. So maybe it'll make $3 million. Maybe. Uh, while Redeeming Love, with its $6.5 million after two weeks, will probably get somewhere between 9 and $13 million by the end of its run. But I cannot do any breakdowns as far as how much money that film uh, is actually going to potentially make or lose because there is no production budget as of yet. As you can see, uh, Scream 5 already at $83 million, meaning $13 million in net gain profit. So good job for you. Uh, <laughs> on the other side of the equation, the 355 is at $102 million in the red and uh, likely will stay very close to that. $100 in the red territory. Uh, King's Man still at around $85 million, So actually, a correction there. Uh, $85 million in the red there. Sing 2, $33 million in the black. Matrix Resurrections not even being mentioned anymore. So again, one of the biggest flops of the year. Guaranteed now at this point in time. Another major flop West Side Story. Still not doing anything. Ghostbusters Afterlife still $5.1 million net gain, net profit. Which means it is still vastly more profitable than Ghostbusters 2016 ever could ever hope to be. So yeah, very slow weekend at the box office. Not a really whole lot going on, but just wanted to break things down for you. Talk about some movies that I know probably there's some individuals that actually uh, you know care about some things like Ghostbusters or Kingsman or 355, etc. So I wanted to get those things covered. But also, uh, what do you think is the final number for Spider-Man No Way Home? Again, it's up to 1.73. According to uh, industry experts, it's actually at uh, 1.74 billion. So yeah, just about right. So actually, that number might actually just be correct. They, of course, would have just rounded up there just a little bit. But clearly on the path to 1.75 billion by the end of this weekend, do you think it'll get to 1.8, potentially to 1.9? I think 1.8 territory is probably looking like a pretty uh, safe bet for it. That is, of course, um, because of the fact it is going to finally have some competition next week. That's right. Competition back in the box office coming back next week because, man, oh, man, you've been waiting for it. Jackass forever. <laughs> Jackass forever. It's going to be number one at the box office. I'm just saying it right now. It's going to be number one at the box office. It's got a $10 million budget. It's going to probably make its money back very easily in the opening weekend. I very much would like to go see it because I actually grew up during the Jackass era and actually really enjoyed those films, which is a kind of a weird thing. It's kind of kind of an internal crisis that I actually have within myself, uh, dealing uh, <laughs> with just the, the nature of what goes on in, in that series. But um, it is still something where the, the, the box office numbers are going to be very clearly in its favor. But what are y'all's thoughts about that? And anything else I mentioned in the comment section down below, if you like this video, smash that like button. Live that fire button on Odyssey. We do have a channel on Odyssey. So shout out to the Odyssey fan. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Check me out over at OMB Reviews on YouTube, Odyssey as well. You guys are great. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.